Broken characters in any game suck. They can invalidate the rest of the cast, ruin ranked games with stupid cheese, and worst of all, can be so brain dead and easy to use that they're just everywhere. A broken character doesn't just ruin your game. They can fundamentally change the way the game is played and spoil it for everyone. Now, sometimes a developer will save us from their mistakes. Other times, well, let's just say the top few entries on this list are still haunting us to this day. Here are the top 10 most broken characters in esports history. Kicking off our list at number 10 is League of Legends' most recent balance mistake, Aphelios. Well, Aphelios is always a pleasure to watch it's when, he ends up, uh, when he ends up doing it. 200 years yeah. of collective pentakills. Absolutely <laughs> incredible stuff. Now, we all want to brag when we get a pentakill, but when Aphelios was released, doing that just felt wrong. Because the champion, and specifically their ult combined with their flamethrower ability, were broken. Ultimate running keeps himself alive, but that Empress Divide was absolutely fantastic. It's nothing in comparison to Mystic with his quadra kill, though. Is it going to be back to back penters against Sandbox in the first game? It is! But the sad part is, it seems like Riot built a compelling champion with a pretty complex set of abilities. Maybe even too complex. I have no f***ing clue what I'm looking at. I don't know what's coming next. I'm just, I mean, you just approach him and you're guessing. You're actually just guessing. And if the pentakills were the result of expert technical play instead of a busted ultimate, maybe we'd all remember Aphelios as super cool instead of super broken. Taking the number nine spot on our list is Akuma from Tekken 7. I can't believe what we're seeing here. Look at the life bar. Oh my goodness. Is he, a, he probably has this a sliver, is almost right? A he full might bar have a sliver. Combo. What? Oh my god! Oh my god! Let's go! Oh! Originally a Street Fighter character, Akuma seemed like a strange fit when he was added to Tekken. Because even though Akuma was in a Tekken game, he brought all his Street Fighter tools to the party. So between his insane damage and just generally breaking the rules that most Tekken characters follow, he was difficult to balance. And guess the full charge. Oh, okay, max damage. No, whoa, what is this? Okay, baby, we got max damage. Oh my god, that angle looked like it could have re splat, could have ended it right there. 85% and Akuma's ridiculous damage. Eventually, he was nerfed. And while he's still considered strong by many, the days of raging demon oppression are gone. For now. Dota 2 is a game where you usually just counter really overpowered things with some broken things of your own. But one hero stands out among even the sea of broken nonsense, which is why Release Monkey King takes number 8 on our list. The tuning on this hero was way off. Back then, MK's Boundless Strike gave more crit damage per level, he had more armor, and Jingu Mastery had no duration. But beyond just number problems, Monkey King's ult, which creates over a dozen copies of the hero, used to copy the effect of the Skull Basher item, giving each one a chance to bash enemies. Have fun not playing Dota the second that this chimp pressed R. At number seven on our list is Release Xin Zhao, who broke League of Legends in one week. Released in July 2010, Xin Zhao was initially a terrifying blender of a character. With great base stats and an overtuned kit, he terrorized Summoner's Rift. He had a charge that slowed enemies approximately 40 feet away from him, a buff that let him knock enemies into the air every three attacks, and a steroid that increased his attack speed and reduced cooldowns, letting him do it all even faster. And to top it all off, his ult was a brain-dead AoE attack that dealt extra damage based on enemies' current health. So yeah, 
a hard-hitting, disruptive, highly mobile melee attacker with a high attack speed, very low cooldowns, and some self-healing. Once they were on you, you were pretty much dead. At number six is a character that is almost unbelievably broken. Pre-release Twisted Fate. Lock a gold card in the fountain, destiny, and then gate directly behind them. Listen, there's a reason that the teleport summoner spell has a long cooldown. Moving across the map quickly is something that shouldn't be happening all the time. But pre-release Twisted Fate didn't care about the rules. He had a teleport on a very short cooldown that was global, and unlike the summoner spell, could literally put him anywhere. Here we start a new game with a new level 6 gank. Again, I'm within two attacks of stacked deck, I've locked the gold card, and I destiny close to Anivia. Even with flash, cleanse, and rebirth, my damage output is just too awesome. Gold cards stunned not only the target, but everyone else around the target too. His passive was a team-wide crit chance buff, and his wild card's ability had incredible range that let him abuse whoever was across from him in lane. Basically, the character was incredibly strong, and could show up wherever he wanted, whenever he wanted, to shove a gold card down your throat and walk away. At the halfway point on our list is Lee Roy Smith, the most broken character in Tekken history. Formerly a bot player, formerly a geese player, now he's using Leroy. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Leroy was just too good. He did too much damage, his moves were too safe. And in Tekken, a fighting game scene known for highly analytical players with vast character and counterpick knowledge, the verdict was clear. At EVO Japan 2020, six of the top eight players played Leroy. Fan favorites like me and JDCR were eliminated by Leroy players. Yeah, just pick Leroy, I think. Not too much damage. They don't have enough meter to really make that too explosive here. Orbital again, again. right? That's not going to seal that move. It's too good to not use. Ba -ba -ba. Let's see how so much damage and that brings out the pole. Little <laughs> fist bump there, yeah. Get wrecked. Coming in at number four is Lion from Rainbow Six Siege. Target acquired and now Magnet knows exactly where he has to cut off. He's also getting Lion, also getting Ying, detected by the E1D. Neo cleans him up. See, Lion's gadget gave defenders a choice. If you moved during the duration, it outlined your location to the entire enemy team. And in a game where intel is everything and you can shoot through many walls, that's not good. Raphael using the smoke and candela combo is just going to push right in. They'll have some covering fire as the artillery of glass stands in bathroom. And look at that, Raphael, they will just bully them. Vitality sweeps into the site. If you didn't move, well, you were probably about to get peeked and killed. Never mind the fact that the drone could be used once a site was secure to make retakes extremely difficult. The gadget basically broke the rules of Siege. What makes Lion so powerful? Well, a lot of people say just stay still. But that's not easy when you're getting flashed, or pushed, or jackaled. Once bans were introduced to pro play, he picked up an insane 100% ban rate before Ubisoft put him in quarantine while they figured out how to fix the mess they caused. The EE-1D drone is now a much weaker version of its former self, and is mostly overshadowed by other operators. But honestly, we're okay with that. No one misses Lion at his worst. Our number three spot goes to Smash's second most broken character, Bayonetta. Oh Punch my gosh! Uh -oh. oh! No way! Oh, he goes! And Salem! No way, dude! After the initial hype of her announcement, it turned out that Bayonetta had a touch of death combo that could be performed from nearly anywhere on screen. Add to that some incredible recovery and other tricks like Witch Time, and the character was clearly overtuned. But while the initial nerf she received made her less popular to casual players, she was still incredibly strong, and plenty of pros still used her. <laughs> I'll give you credit. Oh! 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 That's, it. That's it! He's oh dead. My God. Holy Christ! <laughs> Oh, take that, Ethan! Oh no! Take that, Ethan! No, no way! Ethan. No way! No way! At Evo 2018, the last Smash 4 Evo Finals ever, two Bayonetta players forced the game to a standstill after fans booed them for much of the tournament. What is going on? What is this? I don't know. I was stalling for time. 
All right, man. Well, now I really understand why this is the last Evo. Uh, no, <laughs> last Evo was Matt for you. I mean, now you really get it. <laughs> Eventually, a TO forced them to keep playing, but the damage was done. Thankfully, Bayonetta was pretty severely nerfed for Smash Ultimate, so the witch truly is dead. Today, it's pretty rare that a consensus number one character pick goes unchanged for basically the game's entire history. But in Brawl, one baddie boy perched atop the tier list from day one, Meta Knight. And the glide attack will do it. Two stock from Mewtwo King, Esam looking like he is lost. This is another character that basically has everything. Great damage, easy kills, amazing recovery, insane mobility. The only thing bad about Meta Knight was that he was a bit of a glass cannon, but that hardly mattered. And the thing about Mewtwo King is all he's really doing is just letting Esam hit him. And it's it'll just if he sees Esam above him, he'll just shield. And other than that, Mewtwo King will just stay in the air Oof. and wait for Esam to put out an attack. That There's nothing Esam can do about it. If any character was deemed to have a bad matchup with Meta Knight, they probably weren't getting played too often. It got so bad that the character was briefly banned from pro play under certain tournament rule sets. And the character's strong offstage and edge guarding ability caused certain stages to become banned as well. Players like Zero would be like the best at this because Zero would actually actively practice doing this optimally all the time. And I was probably the second best at it. And the worst part was that Nintendo never patched Brawl. Meta Knight ruled the game from launch to death. Taking our top spot is the most broken character in esports history. The character that destroyed an entire league, Brigitte. When you see Brigitte, you think that she's pretty much unkillable because most DPS characters that do all the damage don't really work against her. Brigitte was a close-ranged healer with good defensive capability. Players were excited for a different kind of support. But while Brigitte definitely changed Overwatch forever, it wasn't in a good way. Now Mickey has a rally. If he can stay alive, doing lots of damage, giving his team a good amount of healing as well, getting a little bit low, needs to be careful here. Wow, he's got the rally off. They actually kept him alive, Dallas. She was just too good at too many things. She did good damage, could layer armor onto her team's health bars, and she had good crowd control. The new meta Brigitte created was called Ghosts, and it featured three tanks and three supports on each team. No damage, just big bodies and endless healing. Chat, I cannot imagine what it's like to be a pro player right now. Chat, 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 I want you to think of this, okay? People and pro players scrim this meta probably six to eight hours a day. There was no reason to play damage with Brigitte around, so no one did. Goats made the Overwatch League into a snooze fest and significantly impacted viewership. We do see the Outlaws are going to pull out Dante's Tracer. This has been some, some of the things that Outlaws fans have been waiting for is a good Tracer player on Houston. It's Jake on the far. This combo's worked well for them before, but as soon as they see the defensive setup, they will just simply swap it away. Crucial time lost here for the Outlaws. Well, you know, you want your team to win, right? They're going to have to play what's meta. After nerfing her again and again, Blizzard gave up. They invented role lock and forced players to run two of each role instead of allowing them to play goats. If a character can reshape the way that players are allowed to play the game, and that's a better option than trying to balance the character, you know that they're broken as hell. Well, that's our list. And man, was it hard to write. There have been so many broken characters across our favorite games that it was actually pretty hard to pick. Did we miss your favorite? If so, let us know in the comments. And while you're here, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. See you next time. Real talk, the actual most broken character in the history of esports is Gambler. Actually, oh, yeah. like literally not even close. Like this thing was so stupid. His his ability was just like basically like like money. That was his ability. He just he just literally spawned farm. Yeah, Gambler was was real dumb.